Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by Robert Duran Jr. Robert, it is a pleasure of mine to speak to you. I uh, actually seen you on the Fury and Ghana undercard. Unfortunately, we didn't get to speak to you that, that fight week, I don't believe. But it's great to speak to you. How have you been, first of all? I've been good, man. You know, taking a step by step, by step day at a time, you know. In terms of, of you and your career, first of all, we're, we're a big boxing platform in Europe, the biggest in Europe. And just for people to kind of get a bit of an idea about you and Robert Duran Jr., the person, um, what was your early life like? And, and was boxing always and combat sports always a mainstay of you, obviously due to your father as well? But for you personally, did, did you have a great desire to, to end up in combat sports? Um, When I was younger... um. I didn't have a desire for it when I was younger. You know, I grew up with my grandparents and um, I just grew up fighting, you know what I mean? It's not only till I got older, till I decided like maybe I should take a crack at it, you know, to boxing. So then that's when I transitioned. What was your earliest memory of boxing for you? My grandfather used to take me to the gym when I was nine because he wanted me to start boxing at the, at a, you know at an early age he wanted me to start training but you know, my mind wasn't there at that time you know when did As you have kid, an extensive amateur career or nah um i only got five amateur fights but i i jumped straight into tournaments and i ended up winning uh three silver medals one gold medal and a 152 pound title I, sh I jumped straight into tournaments and then um, I got my five stationary um, amateur fights and then I turned pro. Let, let's talk a bit about then, obviously, the transition for you. Growing up in boxing, anyone I've spoke to with a father in this sport, they get this sense of a lot of pressure. They are someone who everything is always made to be about their father. Did you find that for yourself growing up in the sport? Yeah, at the beginning I did, but then I started as I fought more and more. You know, I didn't feel that pressure anymore. But, you know, that's something that I'll never escape in boxing. You know, that'll always be there. You know, people always mention that, bring it up. You know, so it gets tiring at times, <laughs> you know. Of, of course, I have to ask you these questions, but I understand that you're consistently answering these and, and people talk about it, but your father's influence on your boxing career, was that a great influence for you? And was it, obviously it's brilliant to have someone like your father who is an absolute legend of the sport, but did he have a lot of influence on your boxing career, first of all? Not at all. Everything that I've done in boxing, I've done on my own. I've done with my wife. I've done with my team. You know, I've done everything alone. Nothing with him, nothing. And in terms of your relationship with him now, are you at a, an amical place where obviously there's been times maybe you haven't been on, on par together, but right now are you in a, in a good place together? We haven't spoken in a while, but then we rekindled in Saudi Arabia at the Francis Ngannou fight. You know, we rekindled, we spoke a little bit, you know, but um, that's where we're at now, you know, we're step by step. Let, let me ask you about the preparation for that fight on the undercard against Jack McGann. Unfortunately, the result didn't go your way. Did you mm -hmm. feel like preparations were good for you or maybe was that uh, too soon, that fight coming around? No, that was that was the fight for me. It was, I was ready for that fight. Preparation was ready. You know, how I look at it, I'm always going to say it. The referee stopped that fight extremely too early. It was a pre-premature stop because if you look at the other fights, Everybody else that got knocked down, damn near knocked out, they allowed to continue that fight. You know, they allowed to continue fighting. You know what I mean? So there was a lot of politics in that fight. Being that I know his managers, I know everybody over there, they didn't want that fight to keep going because I would have won regardless. I know my skill. I know, I, I know me as a fighter. You know, I would have won regardless. But the fact, that's what really upset me about that fight. What's that, that premature stop? Do you want to run that back? Is that something that bothers you, that you want to do that one more time? Oh, of course. I reached out. I already told them, let's run it back. I already did that, you know? But they're telling me, oh, you have to put up the money. You have to do this. You have to do that. 
You know what I mean? When you first, when you guys came to me, that wasn't the issue. You know what I mean? You guys had everything set when you guys came to me with the fight. Now there's all a whole bunch of politics and put up the money and you're promoter this. I'm like, come on, bro. Cut the cut the bullshit. Be, being a part of such a main event like Fury and Ganu, what was that like for you? It was, a, it was, listen, man, it was an amazing experience. You know, Saudi Arabia, the undercard. It's just the whole atmosphere. It was just incredible. You know, I would... That that's a chance that I would like to relive and dream and you know and go through over and over. And if I had a time machine, I'd definitely go back in time. <laughs> it was it was wonderful. In terms of that main event, what did you make of, of Francis Ngannou's performance against Tyson Fury? Uh, you really want to know my honest opinion? He lost. He really lost that fight. But you know, um, I guess he had a contract signed with uh Usyk already. So there's no way in hell that they was going to give him the loss. So, but that's just how I see it. So you believe Tyson Fury lost that fight? Of course. And in, in terms of being around that, and obviously now you're seeing Francis Ngannou will fight against Anthony Joshua. How do you think that fight will go? How I look at it is this. If, if Tyson Fury was to go out there and fight how he's supposed to fight, you know, because, you know, Tyson Fury is a great fighter. You know, he's a great boxer. If he would have did six, 60 to 70% of his ability, he would have won. You know, he would have beat Francis Ngannou. And if you go out there, I'm not taking anything from Francis neither. You know, he's a great fighter, but he's going into boxing. You know, if you're going to go out there and fight somebody, don't play with that person. Go out there, handle your business, and go home. That's you, what that's what Fury should have did. Do you believe that Ngannou stands a chance against Anthony Joshua in a few weeks? Uh, if he lands something solid, maybe. But if Joshua goes out there and hands and handle business, you know it can be an early night for Francis. Let, Not play around like Tyson did. It's it's true. In in terms of what what you have going on, let's talk about you. You've recently signed a massive deal with BYB Extreme Burn Knuckle. Tell me a bit about this decision for you, Robert. Was this a, a an easy decision moving over from boxing? Is this maybe you done with boxing? Or tell us a bit about that. So, um, Bare Knuckle has is something that I've been trying to do for like the last three years now. You know, I've always wanted to do that. That's that's one of my pride and joys right there. You know, I enjoy that. You know, I come from that. You know, but as in and as in quitting boxing, now I haven't quit boxing yet. You know, I'm gonna be back and forth, but I'm gonna focus my my main focus is gonna be BYB. Why why BYB? What what was the attraction of BYB for you? Oh, because BYB, I don't have to worry about me being under my father's shadow. I don't have to, you know, worry about living to the reputation of my father, becoming this, this, and that. You know what I mean? There's not that much criticism and politics as there is in boxing with BYB. You know what I mean? BYB you, will be basically my like my lane, my own lane. Do you believe your father would support this decision to go into this for you? Do you believe that he will maybe be alongside you in this journey? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. I can't. I can't really answer that question. <laughs> I'm not sure. You know, that's the conversation away. He probably won't like he probably won't won't like it, you know, because of the brutal, the brutal, the brutality of the sport. But hey, we'll see. In, in terms of you've said it there, this is a chance for you to make your own name. Just tell me how that's gonna happen in BYB. Do you believe that you're gonna be a serious contender in this, this I am. Time? I am. You know, at the end of the day, like I said, this this is this is not boxing. You know what I mean? The gloves are off. I don't have that. I don't feel that pressure. There's not, it's not going to be no pressure of my father's name on me. You know, people are not going to be looking at me that way. They're going to be looking at me as a, as a fighter, you know, and I come into the sport with all seriousness, wanting to dominate and then wanting to do what I know I'm going to do. So if Boxy didn't give it to me, BYB is going to give it to me. The Trigon's the smallest ring in combat sports. Do you believe that suits your style, Robert? 
It does, because I don't really like my opponent running around nowhere too much. You know what I mean? So that'll that'll be perfect for me. If you if we're sitting down in this time in 2025, what do you want to have achieved in BYB Extreme? By 2025, you see me as champion already. As champion already, undefeated. This is just dreams and goals. I, I want to ask you about the conversations you've had with the guys at BYB Extreme, Greg and and Don, for example. They're a great bunch of guys who are kind of in the infancy of, of this this company growing in the sport. How excited are you about their plans for the future of BYB? I haven't spoken to Greg, but I've spoken to Mike. And I've spoken to Don and Mel a little bit too. And, um, you know, they have a lot of exciting things going on. I think BYB is really going to explode large, you know, and I'm I'm happy to be part of it in the beginning in the beginning phases of the sport they have 11 fight nights scheduled in 2024 how busy do you want to be robert just like i told them i want to be as busy as possible as, as long as i'm not injured you know just keep me busy we all came to an understanding and then that's what it is give me a bit of an idea about what the fans can expect from you is it a dominate and explosive performance every time robert duran gets into every that time. Every time, every time, I have no mercy, no th no sympathy for no other fighter because they they're gonna they're gonna come into that trigon wanting to do the same to me. So that's what I'm gonna give everybody an explosive fight, putting somebody to sleep. La last one from me before I let you go. In terms of making your own name and making your own legacy in combat sports, this is your chance and this is your time. Just yes, tell sir. the fans why you will take this opportunity with both hands and make sure that by the end of your career in, in combat sports that, that everybody knows Robert Duran is a, a dominating performer in, in combat sports and in BYB Extreme. Like I've always told everybody, when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, I'm in the gym every day. I'm dedicated, I'm focused. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't get sidetracked. I'm in the gym busy. So when I get into these fights, I already know that is life or death in these fights. You know what I mean? This is not a joke. This is not a playground. I don't come to bullshit with nobody. I come into this ring to take care of business and get out. And at the end of the day, I'm going to be the one with my hand raised, and that's just what it is. Well, Robert, it's an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much. Likewise, for likewise. With me, and, and we look forward to having you again on IFL TV. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you, champ. Thank you. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook.